Walking through the town of Harrison Hot Springs now. We're just checking out the town, me and Richard. And uh, it's a beautiful little town. Very, very friendly people. And um, what were we talking about earlier on the walkover? Uh, we were talking about pizza there at one stage, but um, I don't remember. We're just approaching the the uh, yeah. museum. We got some nice little shops here. We got the uh, Village Pizzeria. Vegetarian and carnival. Ricky wants a piece of vegetarian. I'm gonna get the meat eaters pizza. Cause I'm a meat eater. Ricky is a vegetarian. But he's not wanting any cheese because why? It's a bit. Uh, I've had a bad cold and bad infection. So I just got some antibiotics. Look what we Clearly have here. That, that isn't buying well for my um, no. promoting a vegetarian diet when I'm the one that's keeled over. Usually here, I'm healthy year, year round. Here we have free parking and the Sasquatch Museum, aka Harrison Hot Springs Visitor Information Center. They are one of the same. So if you come to Harrison Hot Springs, you will come check this place out. They will give you all the information you need on accommodations, uh, fishing, all kinds of tourists, stuff like that. And also it's a Sasquatch Museum. Let's take a look inside. I was gonna say, I can't have any cheesy pizza, but I can give you a cheesy grin. Oh, here, let's see if I get one. <laughs> that looks like you're in pain. <laughs> Here we go, Sasquatch Museum, <laughs> the Harrison River Valley land of the Sasquatch, and also visitor information like center. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of those later Terminator movies trying to smile. <laughs> and we're back. Hello, do you mind if we film? We're just making a YouTube video. You're more than welcome to come in. Thank you. It's oh, like wow. deja vu. Look at this. I didn't even see that when I came in here before. That's awesome. These are the John Green books. Who made this uh, thing here? That would be me. You made this? <laughs> Playing with my grandchildren. Really? Yeah. That is awesome. That's like one of the coolest things I've seen all week. Love that. Do you like make more of these things to sell and stuff? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to hold the grandkids in for long enough. This thing is incredible. I actually love this. Okay, just right off the bat, something awesome here. The lady that works here made this piece of art. And right above it is a local Sasquatch legend, John Green. We all know him. I've read multiple stories from his books. We've been to Ruby Creek. We've been uh, all over the place doing our own investigating in some of the same places John Green has been. If you guys don't remember my Ruby Creek video, go back and watch that. The Ruby Creek incident is actually John Green's first, it's the, uh, it's the first uh, story encounter that kind of got John Green started. He actually just lived down the road from there. Do you, do you know where John Green lived by chance? He just, I, I did a video on Ruby Creek and I did a bit and it, I found out that the Ruby Creek incident is actually the Chapman family or whatever. That's what started his whole journey was that was his first case that he kind of investigated. But they did say that he just lived down the street from the Ruby Creek Chapman family, so. He did live in Agassiz. I don't know the exact location. Um, yeah, he's, he's well missed. That yeah, time. definitely a legend. 
Oh, Dead Man's Curse. I actually, uh, Sasquatch Randy knows uh, a few of these guys from Dead, Dead Man's Curse. I think it's this guy here that Randy not, knows. I'm not sure his name, but. A sculptor, maker, treasure hunter. The Australian born artist is also known as the man who walks many colors. He has resided in Harrison Hot Springs since 1996. Bought one of these for my daughter last time I was in. She loves it. Little Sasquatch stuffy. Did you know that we designed them? You designed these Sasquatch stuffies? Oh, cool. Went to a um, toy manufacturer and said, No one's doing a Sasquatch. Why don't you yeah. this? And they kind of went, Yeah, no. Do you guys happen to sell them to the Harrison, no, the Sasquatch Inn in Harrison Mills? Because I think I've seen we, them over there too. We were like a drop shipper for all of the businesses here. After we designed them, um, we felt it would be significantly advantageous. To have everybody in the village carry them at the same price. So awesome. Just, uh, yeah. yeah, and they are they are Is very. Your daughter's birthday yet? She already has one. She got one last time we were in. But last time we were in, there was a massive Sasquatch there, which is gone. Well, it's a different one now. Oh, there he is. They just moved him. <laughs> so I was uh, in here a while back, and they said that they were going to move locations in August, I do believe, but then I hear it's been postponed. As with anything to do with construction, there have been some pushbacks so, or setbacks. So we're hoping for November 15th. November 15th. We'll be 15th. back in our original location, brand new building, awesome. fully accessible, which we're really excited And it's gonna about. be a lot bigger, I hear? It is. It awesome, because this is quite a small store. It is just a visitor information store, but there's a ton of uh, Sasquatch research and information on the wild people in here and uh so i'm hope i talked to thomas steenberg about this too he has a few uh right yeah he has a few casts in here as well as multiple books this is one of his casts that he got from the uh, chilliwack river encounter there I'll let you guys read that something I mentioned to Thomas that uh, they do focus quite a bit on the uh, hair uh, the Bluff Creek incident but as something I mentioned to Thomas that there's so much so many encounters just around Harrison Lake I'm hoping that they focus more on the uh, local lore and legends from the local people and do you have anything to add to that maybe with the indigenous I do the people known as Stealis have been here for at least 10,000 years that we are aware of. They have been here since the last ice age. And throughout that time, Sasquatch has been part of their spirit world. So he is known as the protector of the land. He is not an animal. He is a different form of human that didn't evolve quite the way that we did. And to see him is considered to be a blessing. And if you see him, you were meant to see him. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you for yeah, sharing that. You're very welcome. And I'm hoping that they will add a bit more of, I call it, I say Stahalis. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. You said it. It's Stahalis. Stahalis. Yeah, just take the H out. Stahalis. Yeah, there you go. Stahalis. Shehalis is yeah, the Shehalis Lake, um, Americanized version of that name. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I do know that uh, the word Sasquatch was a mispronunciation from Saskit. Saskit, yeah. And um, are you First Nations? I am not. No. Oh, but your your pronunciation is uh, spot on. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that uh, Harrison, just on the Morris Valley Road, there's a little cafe called Saskets Cafe. Yes, I haven't Saskets been in there, but Saskets. have you been in there at all? I have not yet, but I'm excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I want to check that out. And I, that's uh, 
pretty sure it's an indigenously uh, owned and run. It is. Yeah. yeah. I think they sell Bannock and uh, stuff like that in there. Uh, it's a cool um, I didn't realize these cast. things were going to come through, but I'm actually in Canada for another week. I'm having a little holiday. So you, you've run me in Canada. <laughs> Everything you need to know um, about I, Harrison, when, when Hot Springs. It's going to be in this store, everything from uh, camping to fishing guides to uh, accommodations. You can't hear over Richard's loud voice. Oh, Sasquatch food, wild vegetation, some of the local... Uh, vegetation that Sasquatch yeah, is you know, known to eat. Text, I, I don't have my diary That's pretty cool. Here. I've never seen this before. So, so next Saturday, I think I'm... Devil's I'll Club route. Here. Yeah, the natives yeah, also you know, utilize that quite a bit. You can make medicine and eat it. I am booked up until late November, which... Back on uh, Thomas Steenberg, I was in here yesterday and I did notice his book supply is dwindling, so I let him know to restock his shelves if he even does that or not. Because <laughs> he has like five or six books and I think there's only two here now or something. I think we have three at this point, three. but they're very popular books. Yeah, same as the John Green. Last time I was yeah. in, I bought this book and it is probably my favorite book about Sasquatch because he laid it out so well. He has every location in British Columbia and all over the states and Canada. And you can just go to the back index and find, say, Harrison Lake, for instance. And then there will be like a bunch of encounters from Harrison Lake. And it's just really well laid out, his book. I hear he was a very detailed man. He was. He was. And that, that stands us in good stead because it allows us to transfer information to people who don't know much about the history of this area when it comes to Sasquatch. Yeah, I literally use John Green's book and like for Ruby Creek, for instance, it'll bring you right to the location and tell you all about the, the encounter and it's just a great book. I haven't read any of Thomas's yet, but we have a couple here. Thomas. And the other side of that same shelf. Thomas down here, the old Sasquatch, Sasquatch in Alberta. I think he has four or five or six books. Who else we got? Matthew A. Milley. Haven't really heard of him. Oh, we got David Polites here. We all know him on the channel. Tribal Bigfoot. Haven't read this one, but I would like to buy this one. And what better place to buy it than the... that one's a bit damaged, so I'm going to get a different one. How much is this? David Plates will get mad at me for not buying from his website, $29.99. Can't go wrong with that. I'm gonna take this one home with me. <clears throat> oh, God bless my mother. She, uh, my mother uh, gave me this one for a birth, uh, Christmas present. Oh, that's a this is a new, re new release all about uh, Dr. John Benernagel and his life and research. Great book. Thanks, Mom. The Asian Wild Man. Cool. I love these old books. That's where you're going to find the best information is in old books. There's another David Pilates one. Uh, the Hoopa Project. I don't have much money to buy all of these, but I'm just curious. $24.99 or a hard copy. Richard, are you gonna get some cool books here? If you're into Sasquatch books. Richard actually gave me a Sasquatch book too as a gift. What was it called again? Aliens and Bigfoot or something? Sea Monsters and by well known orders. Oh look at that. Any info on this mask? That's amazing. That mask was carved by Rocky LaRock. Rocky LaRock? That's correct. And he is from Staelis. Okay. He, Bigfoot is a totem for him. He is, Bigfoot is, or Sasquatch, pardon me, not Bigfoot, but Sasquatch is 
a very, very special part of Rocky's life. And Can I interrupt you just for a yeah, sec? My, I, I showed a few of the carvings um, to a friend of mine, and he watches some show called like uh, Lumber. Lumber. It's King. one of those Lumber Kings yeah. shows or something. And he's seen the statue, either the one here in town of the Sasquatch, and he's like, "Did you know that that's carved by like one of the most famous carvers in the world?" And I was like, "No." Is are we talking about the same guy? I'm not sure. Timber King. He carved that big one out by the start of the there. town. Yeah, no. But they didn't do it, not Timber Kings, but uh, the, they featured a guy on their show once that does some of the carvings for some of their nice log cabins that they built. Right. And it was the same guy that carved that. But I wonder if it's the same. I'm not sure. Rocky guy. Braden, let us know the name of the carver you were uh, talking about. Got some cool toys for the kids. I think you'll like those whiskey shot cups. I love whiskey. I love Sasquatch. I think you're right, Richard. Let's uh, look at some more of the research here. Some more, uh, I'm gonna get these. Oh, another one by Thomas and Merritt. Submitted by Thomas Steenberg. Harbor, Washington. I'm hoping that they just get a ton of stuff from the First Nations people here. And uh, oh, is this the original mask from the uh, dance? That is not. That is a mask that was copied for us based on the original mask. Cool. So there's a whole long story about that. Was it not the original stolen and then it wound up in some museum in Vancouver? That or what's was the story? The story, but. Um, it was never actually stolen. It was given as a gift in, not in error, but in good faith. Yeah. And um, the recipient who was not indigenous, who was a white man, um, took it as a gift, which in the spirit that it was given. And um, they always, they missed it. It was a, a beautiful carving and it had bare fur surrounding it. Oh, awesome. And I then not that. long ago, um, a gentleman from Staelis was talking to two women and they said, oh, we saw the most wonderful mask. It had real bear fur. And it was found at, I believe it was the uh, Museum of Anthropology huh. at UBC. Oh, and in UBC. And it was uh, repatriated back to Staelis a number of years ago. That's awesome. I'm glad they uh, got it back and everything. And Yeah. I've seen the dance a few times on Sasquatch Days. So when they do that dance, is it this one they're using? Or no. The... The, this is... Did you want to yeah. put it on? Oh, we can actually watch the Sasquatch dance right in here. This is awesome. Here we go. We'll let you guys watch. <laughs>
was awesome. That was really, that was really awesome. Here we have the uh, famous Patterson Gimlin footage. That is really shaky. I guess this is like one of the originals, ah, unstabilized. Shaky because of the horseback. Yeah, but nowadays on YouTube they have uh, people are like stabilizing it and enhancing it, and it's like there's no shakes or anything anymore. And uh, I won't dive too deep into it, but there's a little bit of, yeah, we won't get into that here. But the, uh, this footage. Yeah, he had a toonie earlier. He's like, what is this weird thing? Twenty dollar bills look very, very similar to this. This one's driving me nuts. We can't hold them. We're just supposed to be dipping at the end, but little articles. Oh, five dollars. Okay, see, I was gonna say, oh, hundred. Oh. The ours is this color for a hundred. Yeah, actually, our our hundreds are a little bit more purpley. Yeah, like she said, the it's the A-list First Nations have been here over 10,000 years. Some of these artifacts here look ancient. Harrison Hot Springs sightings. So me and Richard, we uh, pretty much camped all around here. We were camping over here on uh, Deer Lake, and we have an encounter here on Deer Lake. There's Hicks Lake, and then me and Richard actually went way up here. This is actually the alien location, where I filmed the alien and the Sasquatch tracks outside my tent, and there's a, another sighting there as well. And me and Richard went to the hot spring over this area, and... Definitely this whole area is probably one of the biggest Sasquatch hotspots on the planet, like I always say. And if you go through the field research, I'm sure all of these encounters listed will be in there. We will not go into that. If you want to do that, come to the Sasquatch Museum yourself and check it out. Here's the uh, Ruby Creek incident. Again, we did the video on. Here's a cast from that. The police were involved, there was investigators involved. That's one of the most detailed and one of my favorite Sasquatch encounters still to date. Some Bluff Creek stuff. Harrison Hot Springs. And another one. It's an older Sasquatch. I think if you Google Renaissance Dance with the Mask, that one's really old. That's from 1938. So yeah, that's about it in here. I'm going to see what this last video is, see if we have one more cool video for you here. Oh, it's just some history. If you guys are fast readers, you can uh, read about that. I'll hold it here for a minute or two. It's a bit of a long story, but I point out often that we see, and you might before we see that we see structures like that all the time in certain forests, but doesn't that look like a Sasquatch? It does. It does. And all that. Yes. Yeah. And it's pretty well um, destroyed. I was out with a friend. How does all this those work? things happening at once could be too much of a coincidence. What is the first initial of your first name? J. For Jason is Forrest. And then first initial of your last name? T. Thompson is... It's harder to find through camera. Oh. What is that? R. Ginormous. Ginormous. Oh, it's over here. Yeah. So, oh, so it's forest and then ogre. Ogre. 
I'm the forest ogre. That's pretty good. What are you, Richard? I'm probably a forest ogre. So Richard, he doesn't want to play, so I'll play for him. Richard is R for wood. We're not going to say his last name, but it starts with an L, so he's wood. Being. Wood being. Wood being, and I'm the forest ogre. Oh. We got some other cool things we're gonna take with us. Nice postcard. My grandmother loves postcards. I should really mail one of these to her. Awesome. What is your name? My name is Bonnie. Bonnie? I know it's left <laughs> left handed, but I can do left. thank you, Bonnie, for You're letting us interview you a bit in the shop and it's an amazing shop here and I will be back to do another video okay. in November. 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 I'll be back. If you guys ever need any help too, reach out to me. So we you don't did. mind taking a shift or two? No. Three? I would love to. <laughs> I got quite a bit of knowledge on the topic, but uh, if you ever needed help with like, I don't know, gathering information about uh, sightings and stuff like that. Um, that would be awesome. I would volunteer my time to help with that. And what about putting on a Sasquatch costume and being in a parade? That I will do for sure. I won't do it in the wings. forest, but I will do it in a parade. <laughs> <laughs> As, Always the costume is actually Mary Poppins though, is that all right? right? Oh, it's probably really hot in there too, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna get David Polite's uh, Tribal Sasquatch book. We will leave a link for that in the description, but I highly recommend you come here and buy it instead. Cheers for now. Well, I saw, saw the videos before it went and she said, kept saying it looks like an amazing spot. That's nice that they've seen it. I she wish. She said she wasn't sure if you were getting my humor or not, but I think you're getting used to it. Yeah. We just left the uh, Sasquatch Museum. Had a great time in there. How about yeah. you, Richard? It's fantastic. The lady was very knowledgeable and um, obviously very passionate about the subject. Yeah, and she knew a lot about the First Nations culture around it, and uh, that's really good to hear. Can you say the name of the First Nations people? Oh, Stah I, I, I always pronounced it with an H, and she said, drop that H. I always said Stahalis, but it's Stahalis. 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 Let's check this place out. This looks cool. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.